Hello, and welcome back to Educator.com in our series on AP Computer Science. Today's lesson is on conditional statements. We'll first talk about what conditional statements are and what they allow our programs to do. Then we'll look at specific examples of conditional statements. First, the if statement, then a variation on the if statement called the if-else statement. We'll then talk about nesting if-else statements and having multiple levels of logic nested inside one another. We'll then look at the extended if statement that allows us to do uh, quite a bit more flexible logic. And finally, the switch statement. The switch statement is not within the AP Java subset, but it is a very useful construct, and I want to briefly talk about that today as well. Conditional statements are very useful because they provide a way to make the statements of our program run in a non-sequential order. If there were no conditional statements, the program flow would simply start with the first line, go on to the second line, and finish when it reached the bottom of our code. But we would not be able to have any decision-making ability in our program. Conditional statements allow us to allow the program to make decisions and do things or not do things based on conditions that uh, occur at runtime, which is to say during the time that the program is running. Based on the value of a Boolean expression, the computer decides which path to follow in a conditional statement. There's an if statement, and if the Boolean expression is true, then the portion of the if statement that's following the line that contains the if is executed. And if the value of the Boolean expression is false, then that portion of the program code is not executed. It's simply skipped. In an if-else statement, we have two pieces of logic. One that is executed if the Boolean expression evaluates to true, and the other if it evaluates to false. These structures can be nested, which means that one is contained within another. And you can have them nested as many levels deep as you need in order to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish with your program logic. This provides very powerful program control capability. Finally, the switch statement Although it's not part of the AP subset, and you will not be expected to answer questions about it or use it in your free response answers, it's a very useful structure, and I'd like to take just a brief moment to talk about that at the end of our lesson today. The simplest decision-making control, control structure is the if statement. The structure of the if statement is like this. There's a keyword if, then there's parentheses, and there's an expression within the parentheses. And the expression can be as simple or complex as you need it to be, but in the end, it must evaluate to a Boolean value of either true or false. And if the value evaluates to true, then whatever is on the next line after the if statement is executed. And that can be anything that you need your program to do based on the expression being true. If the value of the expression evaluates to false, the line immediately following the statement is skipped, and control passes to the next line of code, which would be down here after the bottom of the if statement. You can execute multiple statements based on the result of the if statement by enclosing them in these curly braces. There's a left curly brace and a right curly brace, and these always denote a block of code that is always executed as a group. So in this if statement down here, if the expression evaluates to true, everything within this group of curly braces will be executed. If the expression evaluates to false, then nothing within this section of code delimited by these curly braces will be executed. So it's all or nothing based on the result of the expression. The if-else statement is a variation on the if statement, and this is a two-part decision-making control structure. There's still the keyword if, 
and there's still an expression within parentheses that must evaluate to either true or false. But there's another part down here, there's another keyword else. And the way this works is if the expression evaluates to true, then the statement immediately following the if statement is executed. If, on the other hand, the expression evaluates to false, then the statement immediately following the else part is executed. So we either do something here if the expression is true, or we do something else after the else part if the expression is false. Because Boolean expressions can only have two possible values of either true or false, one of these will always be executed, either the if part or the else part. They will never, it will never be the case that both of them will be executed, but it will also never be the case that neither one of them will be executed. Like the if statement, the if else statement can also execute multiple statements based on the result of the expression, again with these curly brackets or curly braces as shown here. If the expression evaluates to true, then everything within the curly braces after the if statement is executed. This line and this line, however many lines are in this block, will all be executed. On the other hand, if the expression evaluates to false, then everything in the section immediately following the else statement is executed, which would be this line, this line, however many lines there are in the else portion, delimited by these curly braces. Just like on the previous slide, it's, it's one or the other. Again, the expression will always evaluate to either true or false. So either this block will be executed or this block will be executed. Never both, but never neither one.